Hey, welcome to Virtual TrekCon. Uh, my name is Thomas Supra, a makeup artist uh, for uh, uh, quite a few years. I uh, worked on uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Next Generation, Voyager, Enterprise, uh, let's see, uh, Star Trek, uh, Starfleet Academy, CD-ROM, Interactive with uh, some of the original cast. Uh, Bill Shatner, uh, Walter Koenig, and George Takei were on board for that. Um, let's see, um, Star Trek Generations and Star Trek First Contact. Uh, so uh, uh, about almost 10 years worth of Star Trek in my life. And uh, um, uh, we're here to uh, recreate something from the show, and uh, this is one of my Emmys. Anyway, this is from uh, uh, Deep Space Nine, uh, Distant Voices, and here we have hey, our lovely actor. I'm Rico Anderson. I am an actor. I've been in Star Trek Renegades. I was on the Orville, and today I am a uh, prosthetic model. So here we are. Well, thank you so much. Really, seriously, it's quite the trek to my place. Let's see what you're there. It's an honor. Yeah, seriously. So, um, so here's uh, the front and the wig. Um, I hand tied that. Hand tied all the hair pieces. Um, going to recreate this the as close to what we had on Star Trek Next Gen. Let's see, this is a forehead piece that I sculpted, and um, it's kind of styled after um, uh, one uh, my buddy Mike Smithson did for uh, the episode, I should know the name of that episode, um, where we had the uh, three original Klingons um, come. Oh, for DS9? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, gosh, with the albino. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so this this is uh, kind of styled after uh, the, the uh, William Campbell forehead. Which was one of my favorites. So that fits nicely. And then we have two different noses here. Yeah, it's not too big. No. <laughs> so. Now, this forehead appliance actually is available at a place called FX Warehouse in Philadelphia. So, okay, and we're going to go with that nose. I happen to have two noses. Actually, that's one of the interesting things about the show is like we would have a forehead. And then we'd have nose number one, and then we'd have nose number two, because everyone's noses would be different. And we had a wide range of actors coming in with different noses. So basically, forehead's a forehead, but we'd have a box of noses, and we'd have to pick our noses. Ah! It just doesn't stop. Um, I always thought the, the one that uh, was used, like in The Voyage Home, always had that especially like the scene where they decloak right on top of the ship mm -hmm. the the ship in the water yeah that was like that needs to happen in real life <laughs> <laughs> but, but not a ship <laughs> like in the water like like seriously like the whalers and stuff like that yeah i think yeah <laughs> i i think that uh <laughs> i mean that would do it you know but the you know <laughs> fear into them but uh hmm. like now you're the hunted <laughs> how does that feel <laughs> anyway well nimoy yeah mission accomplished on that one yeah <laughs> okay i'm just trying to get the the nostril areas are always such a weird area to try to get down because those little edges will flip up god this is bringing back so many memories <laughs> You have one maybe like favorite memory or something that always sticks out when you think about your, your time on, on Star Trek? Yeah, I can't really talk about those though. <laughs> <laughs> those are memories. <laughs> um, you and John Luke in the, in the uh, supply closet? Uh -huh. No, actually. <laughs> actually. Um, Is that the part you're going to edit out? Actually, uh, this this one friend of mine, she uh, she did wardrobe, um, and uh, she came to visit me on the set because, like, a total Star Trek geek. Like, anyway, we ended up making out on the transporter pad. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's just come on. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How many people can say that? Right. <laughs> and and right. and a turbo lift. 
<laughs> nice. And, yeah. So when you know we went in, it's like you know I, I, I pulled the door shut and, and did the whoosh <laughs> sound, and and yeah. <laughs> It's like, Nowadays, you would take a selfie either before, during, or after. Exactly. Just, you know, video it. Right. <laughs> TikTok, you know. You can open my eyes now. Or, oh, yeah. God. Uh, you can open, actually. Okay. Hello. So, um. Making out on the turbo lift. Getting busy. This is something we use on track a lot. Um, it's called Cabo Patch. It's basically thickened. Yes, nine. Most is that exactly what you spent most of your days on? Um, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I was on. I liked it there actually, and it's weird when I got to do Marina's makeup, you know, on our film Fifth Passenger. Uh, <laughs> uh, shameless plug. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, nice yeah, much. I mean that that to me was like a big dream come true because I always, ah, uh, Counselor Troy. She was just gorgeous and you know i just love that character i loved her character you know and and you know working with her i was always yeah i was always a, a bit intimidated because everyone you know, was like oh you know don't don't talk to marina you know and, da -da 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 -da. and i told her that she's like that that's horrible and she's like anyway and and i did i actually did talk to her and got her autographs like you know probably the third day i worked on the show <laughs> It's like, yeah. Nipped it in the butter. Yeah, well, it's weird because I was told, it's like, you know, you get hired on Star Trek, don't act like you're a fan of it. And I'm like, well, what's the point? You know, it's like, you know, a fan's going to care more about the look of the show than like somebody who's just, it's a paycheck. You know, that's that's my opinion, you know. It's interesting because uh, one of the things, um, these, as Mike Westmore called them, uh, tchotchkes. Um, so... Mike Jr., uh, Mike Westmore's son, um, him and I, it's funny, like, we have a lot in common, like, weird things, like, I love model kits, and he loves model kits, and he, you know, he was a fan of the show, and of Star Wars as well, and stuff, so he took some of his unused model kits, and brought them in, and laid them down, and did flat molds of these model kits for these tchotchkes, as Mike called them, uh, that would glue onto the Borg, you know, costume and, you know, onto the, like, you know, Borg mechanical bits and, you know, it just, and it was interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so I always, I knew what, I knew what the parts were. Like there was a fuselage to a B-wing fighter um, that, that um, I grabbed for my Klingon Borg. So his mechanical Borg eye is actually um, a uh, fus fuselage to a B-wing fighter from uh, Return of the Jedi. Wow. And, uh, but one wow. of the pieces <laughs> that we weren't really supposed to use was from the large X-wing fighter model kit. It was the R2-D2. That was two-part. You would snap them together and, you know, like do up the seams and paint them, you know, with the white and the blue and the chrome. <laughs> well, so it, the phone would be ran in black. And so we'd have these little black R2-D2s, and I would strategically hide R2s on my Borgs. <laughs> and I, I, a while ago at an IMATS, um, International Makeup Artist uh, Trade Show, um, Mike Westmore had a bunch of us up talking about the show. And, and it was interesting because... Um, I had worked on all all the shows except all the movies. I haven't worked on all the movies. I, I just um, I, I was on uh, Next Gen, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise, and and some of the people he had up there, you know, they could only say that they worked, you know, on DS9 and Voyager, you know, and then uh, so yeah, it was it was interesting. So I had a little bit of a you know street cred there, but anyway, uh, I, I digress. Um, I I told that story. At the panel, and I looked over at Mike, and, and I don't—I couldn't read him. I couldn't read what he was, the look he was giving me. But um, it was probably like, "I hate you, dude." <laughs> and, He's I like, told you, you not. What? To. It's like I told you not to. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay, let me get that lace down a little bit more. I mean, once again, this is this doesn't need to be on twelve hours. But yeah, um, you know what's interesting is the actor who played the Klingon Borg in First Contact 
actually lives up here in the high desert oh, as really? well. Yeah. I've been wanting to get together with him and do like a, a really nice display. It's it's interesting because there's like a lot of fans out there of him. And and so yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a Klingon without eyebrows. That's that is fandom right there. Yeah. Because fandom will attach on to the biggest actor in Trek and the actor that may have one line mm -hmm. but a very memorable moment. And um yeah, you got fans. It's pretty amazing. Did you work on that in that DS9 episode where they where they revisit the the trouble with tribbles? No, moment? no, I I really wanted to work on that episode, but I I was I forgot where I was. Um, probably doing something not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> What was the what was the episode that you got the um, that you got the Emmy for? Um, uh, it's uh, distant uh, distant voices, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, one with a uh, uh, really odd episode um, with uh, Sadig. Um, Alexander yes, thank you. Uh, well, back then it was Sadig, <laughs> and, and uh, but yeah, his character gets zapped by this this creature and and uh alien and <laughs> and it caused like all this weird memory stuff and like he starts aging and that was yeah i remember that that was a weird episode hmm. okay so you have facial hair so i'm just going to glue on top which you know i'll of course help you get this taken care of later um, so, the spirit spirit gum yeah it's oh, yeah this I, is I a really yeah, yeah this is a really good one um yeah it's it's a little pricey but you know it's it's the best uh in my opinion it's the telesis spirit it's 25 bucks for that mm. but it's it's like gold oh well, i'm see I'm, I'm from the old school where spirit gum we used it in theater mm -hmm. and you know we so it was probably the talk the toxic version <laughs> <laughs> Gun or today, they'd be like, you used what? Hmm. Okay, so. Yeah, this, uh, I wish we had this particular gum um, back on track. We did a lot of hair work. <clears throat> yeah. And it wasn't just Klingons. I mean, we, we had sideburns. A lot of people don't realize, but not everyone has pointed sideburns, Starfleet sideburns. So, um, yeah, we'd have to hand lay sideburns on Starfleet hmm. members. Huh. Yeah. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, aren't you a handsome Klingon? <laughs> All right. Now, I'm, I'm just going to... Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to take a bit of this here and can I have you lean forward just a bit? Yeah, there we go. Just you're tall. That's the other thing. Klingons are hella tall, you know. Like That intimidation factor. Yeah, and then those damn boots, that just made it even, you know, right, right. crazier. Those lifts. Did you ever work with anybody who had, not, not to go a negative route, but have you ever worked with anybody who ended up being more claustrophobic than they thought they would be in the makeup? <sighs> I've had a couple actors um, who thought they couldn't act. You know, they're like, oh, my face is covered, you know. Mm. And, um, but it wasn't on Star Trek. And it's weird, like, Mike and I got talking, Mike Westmore. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny, like, he told me some horror stories about, like, some of the actors who, who came in. I guess some, some guy came in, and he was one of the easiest aliens. He was a Vulcan, and... 
and after lunch he couldn't find him, and they found bits of him on the way to the parking lot, <laughs> um, where he ripped off an ear, ripped off another ear, mm. um, his you know, bits of eyebrows, uh, the oh $5,000 lace wig was in a trash bin, oh, no. you know, yeah, so... Yeah. Oh my god. But you know the thing is, it's like you you got a job on something called Star Trek. Do your freaking research. <laughs> it's like how do you know how how do you not know that a Vulcan is a prosthetic makeup? I you know, and why would you rip that stuff off like that? Yeah, I it's mean, like, come on. Yeah, it, it just that, that's unprofessional. Yeah, that's, well, I've, I've know, heard so yeah. I I've, I've heard of actors doing that, you know, um I think a lot of times, like the, these behind the scene things, um, where where you see like an actor peeling something off, it's like, uh, you know, that's not, you, you know, you don't do that, you yeah. know, and it's it should have a warning label kind of thing going on here, you know. So. Skin is more sensitive than people realize. Yeah, I mean, do you want to come back the next day? <laughs> you know, that's right. you know, that's that's kind of the reality of it. Yeah. I, I uh, wanted to mention. Friends Beauty Supply and FX Warehouse for, you know, taking orders online and shipping them out. So we have makeup and solvent and remover and prosthetics. So thank you guys. I mean, you know, I have to give a shout out to the people who made this happen. You know, I'm just using this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone could be doing this. Not anyone. Yeah, well, anyone, but I, I've got the stories. <laughs> Not an Emmy Award winner, winner with the stories and the skills to match. Come on. Aw. Give yourselves props, buddy. You're, you're, you're awesome. And you, you, I, it's an honor to be able to add you to the list of the amazing makeup artists that I've worked with, but you, my friend, are the best. Aw. I'm I'm making a wash out of these cream colors, these rubber mask grease colors. These are the Canon colors uh, from uh, uh, PPI and Greg Canon, um, amazing makeup artist. Um, everyone should know who he is. If not, do some research. Greg Canum. Not yeah, it's it's an M, not an N at the end. Anyway, so. Uh, I'm just making a wash with drinkable alcohol, actually. This is uh, basically Everclear. What do you do with a drunken clean Scotty, <laughs> shot glasses, please. <laughs> now, not to take away from, from Trek, but what other, what other sci-fi shows have you worked on? Or projects in general? Well, there's something... Uh, my buddy Paul Jones was doing, and he brought me in for the L.A. lag of it. Um, yeah, we, we did some reshoots and stuff, and it was an honor. It was very innovative. It, it Wow. It was a show called Defiance. Mm. And it, it's sad it didn't continue. It just it was such a, a really cool premise. I, I liked that a lot. That'll come off in a week or two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, now, that's on the auditions are coming in. <laughs> What's interesting about this is the spirit gum um, there is it's an old theater thing mm -hmm. where you dry your teeth off, use gum, mm -hmm. tack it, and then use grease paint. That's, we never did that in the theater. That's, that's <laughs> like an old, old thing that no one does anymore because they, now we have these lovely teeth stains right. and uh, so when I was on Maze Runner Scorch Trials um, that was a technique that uh, we did for the cranks mm -hmm. I was like <laughs> because I knew the, the spirit done thing on the teeth um, I was like uh, you know because we we're using the teeth stains and they weren't staying that long and I'm like Hi, oh, you gotta put the spirit gum down first, and then put the teeth. And so, yeah, it, it uh, they stayed longer, you know. But <laughs> I, I mean, you, be careful with this stuff. But you know, it, it, that's what yeah. we do anyway. Okay, now you can what close. You yeah. So that that helps because Klingons they don't have you know. Yeah. 
And according to DS9, they smell like lilacers. <laughs> they have an earthy smell to them. <laughs> if you remember. That was uh, Trials and Tribulations, wasn't it? Oh. Um, I think so. Gosh. No. Wait. It was some episode where somehow I think Bashir ended up talking to Worf about how he smelled or something like that. Ooh. Something. Yeah. Open. No, I'm just uh, losing losing the the beard a bit. All right, sir. I mean, this is about as far as I can go with this. I mean, you know, we call it anything over our allotted time of marathon makeup. <laughs> so, you know, we could fluff this up a little bit. And that's another thing. I... I Klingon hair. It, it went from <clears throat> really beautiful, stylish in Star Trek VI, like very like Japanese imperial looking, you know. And here's something that most people don't know. But all the hair ornaments were designed to be weapons, like the Japanese court. Oh, ah, you could. Uh -huh. ah. Like poison-dipped hairpins and things like that. Well, I'm, I'm honored. Uh, thank you for letting me talk and talk and talk and, and do makeup and, and revisit a, a, a huge portion of my life. I mean, you know, like 10 years of actually getting paid to do Star Trek, you know, um, and, and uh, you know, fulfilling a childhood dream. So, yeah. Do you want to do a shameless plug for any products or... Please. Well, um, there's this guy, uh, um, Thomas Superna, who makes uh, amazing prosthetic paint that has been used throughout the Star Trek franchise um, and in, in the theme parks, too. In fact, um, the, uh, the Vegas uh, uh, experience, they were buying this for their, their actors as well. Um, and, you know, big shout out to Mike Westmore. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, giving me a, a shot. You know, I was one of the youngest people I think um, he hired, you know, way back then. You know, it's like, and, and I, yeah, I was scared to death the, the entire time. I was just kind of scared to death, <laughs> actually. But, uh, um, and then uh, a Premier Products for all their, their love and support and effects warehouse. And uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll Prince we'll Beauty Supply. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's uh, some beautiful, um, you know, people in our industry who, who you know, um, are there when you need them, you know. And uh, when you're not, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. huh? <laughs> anyway. <laughs>